So you join us right now with CAPTURE's assembled panel on the topic of diversity and racial relations across college campuses in the United States. So first of all, thank you guys all so much for being here today. Uh, can we just start by having you each briefly introduce yourselves to the people viewing? Hi, my name is Aaron Hinojosa, and I am the Acting Executive Director for the Student Center for Reconciliation and Diversity. Hi, my name is Dalia Velasco. I'm a senior at APU and a member of Activate. Hi, I'm Kim Deneu, and I'm a Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer and also a faculty member. I am Maurice Johnson, and I'm the current BSA President. All right, great. Again, thank you guys all so much for being here. Uh, Aaron, I want to open this conversation with you. Can you tell me what the significance is of racial relations and diversity on college campuses sort of entering a national spotlight, especially considering uh, the recent things that took place at University of Missouri and even closer to home at Claremont McKenna? Uh, certainly, Clint. Yeah, the, the, the current events taking place um, are, are significant in many ways uh, because we're looking at um, as we grow uh, more and more diverse, not only as a nation, but as a, as a campus here at APU, uh, we definitely do see um, the pressing uh, needs of not only our students of color, but also for our faculty and staff um, in, in, in awareness uh, for the needs for the students on campus. Um, you know, what's taking place now on our campuses, um, you know, you can go back to the, to the early 60s and, and see where, where the significance of students', students voice on campus has really been the um, the force of bringing things into into light. So on the campuses of the UC, campuses up at Cal, um, civil rights movements, and so on, um, and you see that now. I think the biggest part of the the change is social media and how the the narrative and the perspective is changing. You know, every moment and second as these things unfold. So an open-ended follow-up to that in the entire panel is you see these demonstrations going on. University of Missouri is one of the examples. How would you assess the model that those students are using to bring forth these issues into a public light? Anybody? Yeah, I think uh, students of color have realized like the vast, like the majority, or not, I'm sorry, not the majority, the numbers that they have on campuses and they're really utilizing that and social media. Like I think it's really important to make these issues aware and they've really tapped into that and having, um, like using their voices to really bring these issues to light. Does anybody else want to follow up with that? Do you think that the way they're bringing these issues into the light, is that going well? Could they have done a better job? Is there a different way to bring this conversation to a more forward position? I think um, the, the different perspectives would say, different groups would say, oh, they could have done it this way or they could have done it that way. The bottom line is they have an important message that they're trying to convey to the public and it's really by any means necessary. Yeah. So we could argue about the strategy, but I think the message is more important uh, than even the demonstrations. Would you consider their message to be successful as of right now, the way things are playing out? So I think it's been successful to the extent that they have captured the ears of America. Um, and the, uh, definitely their campus uh, constituents, presidents and other students, faculty and staff. So I would say it's been very successful for, in, in that way. Um, but I, I guess one of, my, one of my concerns as we continue to watch uh, kind of things unfold is what's the next piece of this? Will faculty, students, administration start working together or will we kind of silo and stay in our separate corners and still not come together because honestly I think the the working together is where you see that powerful transformational change versus right. transactional change. Right and I want to touch on that later where do we all think this conversation is going because I think that's a very important point to make. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have over 100 campuses um, that are participating in demonstrations. Do you think that this conversation is only going to gain more traction, or do you think it's sort of top ending as of right now? Well, I, I, I think it's going to continue. Um, and, and it's been a conversation that has probably been an, an underlying uh, conversation for, for decades. Um, I think um, with the student voices now rising to where they, they are, I think more campuses will um, do that. I think it is, um, it's important that they continue. Uh, making not only their campuses aware, but the, the, the faculty, the staff, um, and students that they attend, uh, attend college with, live with, and go to class with. So. 
To bring this conversation to an APU perspective, Maurice, I'm going to come to you. Do you consider APU, um, do you think they've done a good job bringing diverse campus, excuse me, diverse voices on campus and historically, or do you feel that this message hasn't been achieved the way they would have wanted? Um, I think for me, I think I had a conversation uh, this past week about them, and I think that coming from where I come from, I've been here for four years, so I think the uh, um, I think the, there's been a large progression uh, in the area. But I think um, we've gotten thus far. I think we still have kind of a ways to go. I think from coming from my freshman in 2012, I think there has been a, a kind of a progression towards having these conversations of diversity, having conversations um, that um, of students of majority as well as minority. Um, but I do think that there still is a kind of a long way that we do have to uh, um, to go. Yeah, and to clarify, that's a positive progression that positive, you've seen. Yeah, correct. From your freshman through senior year, okay. Um, speaking of diverse voices on campus, Dahlia, you're a member of Activate. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about Activate, it, it sort of came to be last year after the Wanted by Walsh movement specifically sort of came together in that regard. Um, talk about Activate in a little bit and how it's become, how it's come together. Yeah, so Activate was kind of formed by all the ethnic board presidents last year. And I think for them, they were in their senior year they were all seniors actually and they were seeing the same stories and I do agree with Maurice in the sense that yes we have seen like a positive progression um, but I think they were just frustrated that there was a lot of effort but it never seemed to have any results like things were always half started and then we would never really see anything after that so I think that's really where it stemmed from a place of frustration but also a place of loving APU and wanting to see it grow and wanting to push it more towards that conversation. And I think maybe these conversations were happening in, in administration, but not so much with students. And we really wanted to spark that conversation with students as well. Now, from an outside perspective, we haven't really seen a public face mm -hmm. uh, behind Activate. You're the first member of Activate that's gone on record with us, really on mm -hmm. any sort of major public forum. Um, we have Jonathan Butler, who's at the University of Missouri, who went on a hunger strike to bring the attention in sort of a, a drastic but somewhat appropriate way to the conversation, why haven't we seen a comparable person from Activate do something similar? I think we're honestly going through a transition. Last year we had uh, a lot of our people graduate and this year we were kind of trying to figure out what we, this year what we wanted to look like. Um, and I think the beauty of Activate is that we are kind of we don't necessarily have a leadership, we're just a group of concerned students, so there's not a point person that you can go to. And I think that's like the main difference, or that's the main reason that and there hasn't been a And do you think that's a, a good face. model of operation to not have core leadership, but to really just have everybody be inclusive? I think it is in the sense that everybody has a different perspective and we're all coming from different places on campus and we're gonna see things differently. And I think when you bring a team of people who are in that way, um, we have a better opportunity of reaching out to different parts of the campus. Have you achieved what you've wanted to achieve as a present day? No. Okay, can you carry that out a little bit more? Yeah, I think we are hoping to see more policy put in place with administration. Last year we had three resolutions. One of them was resolved and we're really happy about that. Um, ethnic orgs budgets were increased, which I think has been super helpful for them. Um, but I think we're still hoping to see a lot more progression in the sense of everyday interactions with students when something happens we're hoping that a policy will be set in place with administration um, for them to have a required training that they have to attend and we're looking into having more resolutions is one of activates goals to become a recognized student ethnic organization i don't think so no i think one of the beauties of activate because of that we're not an on-campus legit group i guess you could say is there's a lot of freedom in that there's not the pressure that ethnic orgs have. I think ethnic orgs are great, and I mean, I'm an active member of one, but um, there's a lot that we have to do already, so for, and there's a lot of, I guess, regulations in that, and I think that's fine, but with Activate, I think the freedom that it has provides it a lot of room to, like, really question things with APU. And you think that overall, I'm sorry, did you have something to add to that? Mm -hmm. No, no, I want to finish, and then I wanted to add on. Go yeah. Ahead. So yeah, I just think it leaves a lot of room and I mean we, we try to, obviously it makes it more difficult to do things on campus and we don't necessarily want to always be that like for weird awkward group on like how do we do this or like have to spontaneously do things. Um, and I think we can work more towards a partnership eventually, um, but we just haven't really gotten to that point yet. So I just wanted to say one of the things that I appreciate is, is Dahlia coming forward. Um, as we had last year, several students come forward and were actual faces behind mm -hmm. Activate. Um, because you can criticize from a distance or clap from a distance, but to actually come face forward and to engage in the dialogue, to be in the arena together, that's where 
real change takes place. So um, in follow-up to what Dahlia was sharing, um, Activate had three resolutions last year, in fact, one of which was to increase the budgets of ethnic org organizations on campus. And as she's commented, there was an increase in the budgets of the ethnic orgs. The other was to have a process in place that if there were uh, diversity offenses that took place on campus that there would be a streamlined process of students knowing where to go and who to contact. And actually we created that at the end of last year with some input from the Activate students. It's a student resource sheet, one page, that we made available to student leaders and others throughout campus so that students know what's protocol. If, I, if an offensive thing takes place in class, mm -hmm. what are the resources or the support mechanisms that I have in place to actually have some support? I'm not out there on my own. The other is, uh, in terms of diversity training, we created this uh, brochure to highlight some of the diversity um, programming, policies and procedures across campus at the student level, faculty and staff, and university-wide. Uh, but with that, Activate requested that mandatory training take place on campus. Um, we're not where we need to be, but I, I'm happy to report um, that every new faculty orientation, there is a diversity component for all new faculty. Um, HR also provides training uh, through Imago Day for um, incoming staff as well. And then at the faculty kickoff this year, uh, myself and, and a few of our faculty did a segment on microaggressions and talked about Sabona, how do we see each other in this culture here at APU. Um, we currently have the Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusive Excellence working on an online module that will be used as a training for not only adjuncts, but full-time faculty who can't come to our diversity trainings on campus, uh, where they can continue their learning to become culturally literate, what we're saying literate or competent, uh, and be able to successfully navigate differences here uh, on campus and also in our pluralistic society, um, which is, is tricky. We need education. So lots of good things are happening. Um, our record, our trainings and workshops on campus for faculty, staff, administrators, we've reached record numbers. I mean, we used to, I think last year, we were happy if we got 20 people at a, at a training. This year, we've seen upwards of 70 people uh, staff, administration, and faculty saying, we want to learn. So I think some really good things are happening. I just want to make sure we get that message out. And, and if I, sorry. Sorry, please go ahead. Um, I think one of the things last year, specifically with Activate, is I don't think people realized how involved Activate was with administration. Um, we were, since the beginning, in communication with them. We had like been emailing them these resolutions. It wasn't just like, we are here and this is what we're doing. Uh, but we really were trying to be in contact, but it was difficult to communicate that to the greater like APU body. Um, and then as far as like the sheet, I, I think we do appreciate and value the sheet and like what it provides. But again, I think there still needs to be more and it's a baby step towards what we want, but we're still looking to see an, a policy and maybe one specific person. Yeah, um, yeah and that's so, a, yeah. a great foreshadowing to the question I'm about to ask, which we've had tangible goals that have been met, as you've just said, and to give uh, background to this, Dr. Danu, you're sort of at the center point of this diversity initiative that APU has been carrying out, especially as of late. So I want to ask from a staff and faculty perspective and from a student perspective, we'll start with faculty, do you think that enough has been done? Um, and to this point in to in, this point to in this the point. initiative that Dr. Danu and so, the rest of the faculty is carrying out. Yeah, so some context for me. Um, so I did undergrad here, late '80s, early '90s. Uh, so about 23 years ago, and and trying to put that in perspective as as where we are today, and, and about 1,600 students back then. Um, no office of diversity, no student organizations, no representation really for students of color. Um, so to, to bring us up to this point, to see the progression of where we are, um, that doesn't mean we have arrived and we, it doesn't mean that we, that we should rest in what we do. So I think uh, to answer the, the question specifically, I think we've, we've come a long way in, in very good strides. The, the, the issues and the, the uh, microaggressions and the racism that happens on campus that not only activate has brought um, awareness to the campus, but other students have. Um, is an ongoing thing that we will always um, be, you know, be challenged with. So I think um, 
you know, have we fully arrived? No, but I think we're doing some really great things that uh, Dr. Danu has mentioned. Uh, but we have a, a ways to go. Um, and it, but it is, as Dr. Danu said, is um, the things that have been, or there's been resolution to, um, it's getting that out to the greater community so that they are aware of that. And some of the, 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 um, the challenges that we face are the, the personnel issues that come along with that, where you know what we can and, and can't really say, um, you know, when we are dealing with people um, for their own privacy and, and legality around that. Um, so I think to the best that we have done at the, at, to this point is, yeah, we've we, we're doing good, but we, we can be better. If that answers sure. the question sure. for you, from a student perspective, Maurice, you're about to walk across the stage in May. You just told me. Will you be proud doing so, knowing the changes that AP has made? I think I will be proud, and I think from uh, from this perspective that I, I that I am at, I think the the in terms of the disconnection, I think it lies between the distinction between the students and the students leaders. And so from being a leader from the past three or four years, um, I've seen the the strides that the, that the administration have, have gone to. But I think the, the, the disconnection, um, it lies between the students don't know. And so they're kind of, they don't know what's happening between um, the kind of the issues that are happening on, on campus or if there's like a, a, a racially motivated event. They're not sure like um, what steps are we taking to address the issue, um, whether that's from uh, the diversity office or the SCRD. So I think for me, I will be proud that we've come thus far, but I do I want to look forward to it post-graduation that we are going higher in, 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 in those steps. A question for, can, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. Yeah, can I just mention something too? I really appreciate um, uh, the comments of uh, Dahlia and, and, and Maurice as they're sharing from their students' perspectives in particular. But I want to go back to something that, that Aaron um, said, mentioned earlier. When I started here, I came here 18 years ago, straight out of grad school. And I was one of two, one of two full-time African-American faculty member, female faculty members. So to see where we are today, to see 27% of our faculty are faculty of color um, is a big step in the right direction. Not where we need to be. Um, definitely we want to grow those numbers, but we're currently 27% faculty and staff of color. Our incoming students, about 53% incoming students of color which when you look at other CCCU schools, we are leading the, we're leading the way. So I think as we join arms with our students and we uh, work together, I think we can really be leading the nation in terms of particularly Christian schools as well as secular, that we can help provide even a, a motivation higher than being politically correct, that we're being biblically correct sure. and, and moving the agenda forward to, to bring people together. I've heard each four of you say, we're not where we need to be, but we're making good strides. I'd like to end the panel today by simply asking the question, how do we move forward? What significant change would each of you like to see that has not already taken place? Um, it's a great question. Uh, I think the challenge uh, with policy and programs and events is um, those don't always um, change heart and, and value for, for, for people. And I think um, once we could, we could look at the challenge of how do people view and value issues of diversity, um, calling out racism, you know, calling out those things, I think that's when we begin to make the biggest change. Um, from our office, from the Student Center for Reconciliation and Diversity, um, we do an Imago Day training for, for all student leaders, about 500 or so. You know, initiatives out of our office would to, to, to have um, that training be for all incoming um, first-year students, whether they are uh, freshmen, first-year students, or transfers. And, and then how do we continue to, to thread that conversation throughout the year um, and not just be a, a, a box to check once a, you know, one, one time out of the year to say, hey, we, we've stopped to talk about diversity. Um, so I think that would be part of the, the student value that I see taking place. Dahlia? Yeah, I think, like everybody said, like we've seen a lot of progression throughout the past few years, and I really do appreciate that. But I think that there, like everybody has said, there's a lot of work to be done. And I think one of the major things that I would love to see is for the focus to stop being on majority culture students. I think we say that it's not, but a lot of times our programming and our events and all that sort of thing is centered on their feelings and the way that they would receive the information. Um, and I think for far too long, students of color have had to carry that weight and that 
burden on them because they're the ones that have to educate. They're the ones that have to speak for their culture. And I don't think that's fair for students of color. We have our students just like everybody else and we have a lot going on and to have the edit added burden or the added load on us is not fair to us and I think that that truly needs to change. Wow, how much time do we have? <laughs> okay, I so in my perfect world, um, all board members, administration, faculty, staff, and students would be required, underscore, required to go through diversity training. Now, diversity training in a one-time shot is not the panacea for anything because ignorance has to be um, addressed at multiple levels, including in places that impact the heart for long-term change. Um, but nevertheless, so that's one point. Um, we are going to be embarking upon a campus climate study starting next week, and that's going to help us see where our gaps are in our community to make sure we're hearing all the voices. But that is one of my agenda items to see training take place at all levels. That you cannot be a part of the APU community without ongoing or furthering your education on cultural competency, competency and understanding, civility. Um, I will say we are set in January to do a leadership summit for all leaders across campus uh, from administrators to chairs of academic departments. Um, to have a diversity segment for them, but we want to keep moving that forward. Uh, what does it look like to graduate here from APU to be culturally uh, an ambassador for the world to go around? Uh, just one other thing I would say, um, I, I, as an educator, it's important for me uh, that we use our social power to educate and create a space for grace because um, in terms of diversity, so what does that look like? I think too often if there's a fear that if I say something that is offensive, that oh I'm gonna get uh, backlash or bullied or whatever, that people clamp down. And so they don't say what they're thinking until they're around homogeneous populations. And then these uh, cycles of bad jokes and things persist. But if we can create some space for grace here in this community as we're our institution of higher ed, where we not only teach in the classroom, but we teach outside of the classroom. And we help educate each other in a safe space that, yeah, I may goof up, I may say something stupid or unintelligent, but if I can count on Dahlia to say, hey, Dr. Kim, that's not cool, and here's why, uh, that helps me feel safe enough to, to correct that behavior and learn a new path. Um, finally, um, I just think this is a great place, and if we have more students and, and faculty and staff committed to working together, along with administration, we can do some great things. Maurice, what do you want to see change? I think for me, I think I agree with uh, Dahlia in, in the sense that we, we are in an institution where um, a lot of the programming and the departments are geared toward the majority culture. And that's not a bad thing to adapt to that, but we have to figure out and brainstorm um, how, do we get the, how do we get people of color and the minority to, to integrate and to adapt to these kind of programs that are set for our institution. I think the other thing is that um, in terms of administration, it comes down to um, we are changing a mindset and we're changing the heart. Um, and so um, I, I'm, in my own experiences, I've seen um, a lot of um, teachers and faculty, they know these conversations and they're aware that it's happening, but it's a matter of changing their heart and their mentality um, to understand and believe that um, these things are happening to people who may not look like you, but it's still important and, and, and their, um, their backgrounds are still valid. If I could just make a quick comment on that. I think I agree that like the end goal is to change the heart, but it's hard to do so when we don't have policy right. and structure yeah. in place because that really does help gear the conversation and gear not necessarily the conversation, but the action and the way things are handled. Yeah. I could just sure. say one last thing Please. too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this idea, um, I was saying earlier as an educator, that's important to create a milieu for education. The second piece for me would be, um, as a Christian institution, I think we have a higher motivation yeah. for doing this work. Um, and that is to reconcile people to God first, to reconcile each other to each other and then to help reconcile with ourselves because internalized racism is real and we take a lot of times people of color some of the the sickness of the world and we turn it inward uh, which can be very destructive so um, as we look at this work of reconciliation and diversity I think as Christians we actually have a better motivation for it Thank you guys all so much for your comments today. I know I speak on behalf of everybody at CAPTURE when I say we're excited to see where this conversation goes and we'll be excited to monitor it too as a student media outlet. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.